Um, hello, guys. I'm, I'm with Shane Jacobson. Hey, Shane. Hey, mate. How you doing? Yeah, really well, man. Are you in your study? This is my study. Well, yeah. Okay, so number one, I don't study. So <laughs> it's a it's a, a computer space. <laughs> a computer space. <laughs> where you write your scripts and stuff? Yeah, it's where I do. Yeah, I've got, I've got some businesses. I've got a few companies and stuff, so I kind of run it from here. It's from home in the Macedon Ranges in Victoria. But um, yeah, this is kind of where I hide out. There's the Batmobile. You're, so you're a kid at heart. <laughs> yeah, that's... I, I, uh, all right, let's talk about the Batmobile. Um, so it's like a meter long. I don't think you can, like, it, it's quite big. It's like, it is seriously like that big. If I bring it closer to the camera, it gets larger. And I walk past the toy store thing and it was like on the top shelf. And we all remember what it was like when you were a kid and you went past the remote control place or a toy store and there was always some featured thing that you could just never dream of affording. You know, and as my dad always said, we were so poor growing up, we couldn't even afford to pay attention. So um, we actually, at one point, dad was pretty sure we were sponsored by a family in Peru. So we were not buying something like that. And then uh, I walked past and saw it and then walked, <laughs> walked a few more shops away and then went, man, that thing looks amazing. And I walked back, looked at it again and went, you're an idiot. What are you doing? It's a kid's toy store. And then walked away, went back about, in all honesty, like three or four times, I kept going back to look at it and saying, God, I'd give anything to have that. And then rang my wife and said, I've seen this <clears throat> Batmobile. It's ridiculous. And I, like, how stupid am I thinking? This doesn't sound like I'm trying to fishing for a yes. It was like, I don't know, seven or $800. I've had it for 10 years. And um, I'm like, it's $700. It's ridiculous. It's so much money to spend on a car. And she said, if you want a Batmobile, just buy the Batmobile. <laughs> Yeah. And, I, and I kept saying, no, 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 that's not why I'm telling you. She goes, then why are you telling me? Like, I'd, uh, are you going to ring me and tell me about the price of everything in every window of the shop at High Point? Or no. <laughs> so I just went back and bought it. You said you've got a few businesses. I mean, most people know you front of the, ca you know, as a as a, a bloke in front of the camera. Um, what what do your businesses entail? I mean, I'm assuming um that there's a production company in there or something but are there any businesses separate to showbiz that you that you that you dabble in yeah there's a few um so there's uh well there's a test and tag company it's only a very small little business that does testing and tagging there's um fta transport logistics which has got some trucks and vans um i've got one that is related to film is and you're right there's some production companies in there but um, I've got a company which is uh, Film Trucks Australia, which is a catering truck and a green room truck. And adjunct to that is another business called the Bowling Green Cafe. So we, such as the Melbourne Bowls Club, I've got staff in there that do the catering. So when there's not enough work in the film and TV world, and as we know, mate, that was that was last year covered, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> the pandemic. So we kind of um, shifted some staff across and did the Bowling Green. Summit Films and Memory Graph are soon to be launched um, and they look after telling people's stories in a cinematic way. Um, there's another company called Deadpan. So we put the funny and a little bit famous into boring training content um, for companies. Um, and there's another one uh, called Crowd Canvas, which is a new technology we're creating. Um, so there's a few, there's, there's, there's 12, to be honest, mate. There's 12, 12 companies, so. Um, you're also um, Chief Scout at Scouts Victoria, uh, heavily involved with the Mirabelle Foundation and, fa and Parkinson's Victoria. What the actual fuck, dude? <laughs> I mean, so, I mean, uh, how, sorry, and how many kids? Four kids. How many wives? Uh, uh, well, I've got one that's a lawyer, so she can, she can decide <laughs> like that when it's over <laughs> and deal um, with it quite effectively. <laughs> 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 I, I, look, this compels me to um, talk to you about, um, I mean, a, 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 about how you manage a busy life. I, it's, it, it, everybody's life is busy, um, but uh, some people are busier than others. Um, some, people, some people can have a few companies. Other people can try and start one and fail. Um, What's with, I mean, is it because you're in the sh in showbiz that you've had to kind of be more malleable or is it is it because you're one of those people that just has to stay busy and loves lots of things to do? I, th I think, I think it's an even share. I am, um, 
the bit that you know that, and, and we know from our mates, Sam, from our generation of actors and all of the ones before us, and perhaps a few after as well, is um, that permanent state of shitting yourself that there's not a job after the one you're doing. And, and that was very real. When I had to leave full-time, I had to make a decision to become a full-time actor. And, and you and I both know what that means. You don't actually leave work and go to full-time acting. You leave work and you go to this island called Uncertainty and you just got to hope a boat keeps turning up. And I, uh, yeah, I, I used to, you know, be pretty confident I could do okay. But knowing I wanted to have children and have a house and, and you know, retire with some money to pass on to my children, I'm like, wow, that's a... I'm moving into a fairyland story where I hope to come out of it with real solid things. And that's not what happens in fairyland. And I'm like, how am I going to make this work? So... It did come out of like fear, to be honest, is, is not how I would have described it when I'm younger, but at the age of 51, you can be more honest, can't you, mate? Always wanted to be a full-time actor. That was the dream. And my dad couldn't believe I threw away really successful jobs at the time as a sales rep selling medical supplies and all this sort of stuff. I was the youngest investigator in credit card fraud in Australia and had all these kind of interesting jobs. And I kept walking away from them because I they... Same as all of us silly actors, they don't do enough for us. You know, I was, I was, I was literally, I was investigating <clears throat> the John Fredericks case when I was 16, the Wall Street killings, tracking people on paper. And I was like, people are like, you're 16 and you're doing this. And two years later, I'm like, yeah, but it's just not working for me. Like, I was like, how is that not working for you? Anyway, so when I, um, I, I worked for a lighting company when I came back doing entertainment lighting and event management and I used to do fireworks for Bon Jovi and all that kind of stuff. So I'd worked in all these industries and then at one point with this entertainment lighting and production company, I just kept getting promoted. So I did a bit of sales just to sell some lighting stuff and it turned out I was pretty good at that because I, I know lighting very well. Um, I just spilled the coffee all over my computer. That was good. Um, um, do you want to fix that first? Are you pause for a moment. This will be yep. good. Ah, shit. Oh, dude. Oh, no. Control, alt, delete. Hang on. Oh, no. <laughs> but as I was rushing, as I was rushing back for this, uh, in, in my uh, in, in, in my jacket that was inside out, my landlord pulled me up, and um, and I always worry when he pulls me up because it means either I haven't mowed the lawn, I haven't watered the fruit trees, or I haven't fed the cat, or or I haven't fucking paid the rent, or some. But, other... but whatever it is, it's a haven't. <laughs> whatever it is, it's a haven't, and he's a very thorough, meticulous man, and um, and 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 he's. I've grown up with him. He's taught me how to do things properly, and and I'm now thankfully six months ahead in my rent and. The grass is only a little bit long now, but um, he pulled me over and I thought, oh, here we go. Cause I'm constantly worried he's going to sell and I'm going to, I'm going to not be here. And it's the only place I've ever had that I love to live in. And, um, and, and yeah, it turns out he had no idea we were chatting now. He, he goes, now listen, that, uh, those, that, that book to mum that you did, he said, I haven't bought it. I haven't bought a copy yet, but geez, she, they did the excerpts in the Australian. And I said, he said, I couldn't believe that that's a good get. He said, that's a good get. You get in the Australian with the excerpts. I said, I said, we couldn't believe it ourselves. There's a huge readership. And the fact they've asked us to do excerpts really thrilled us. And hopefully it'll drive sales. And he said, my favorite letter, Shane Jacobson's. And, oh. um, and I said, I'm about to chat to him in 10 minutes. I'll let him know. So my landlord uh, loved your letter. And we're going to get to it later. Um, before then, though, I'm hoping to... Um, to drill into this, I know I know now why you have lots of companies, and I know why you do lots of things. And it's oh, well, before I spilt my coffee, the bit I almost got to to prove yeah. that I know where I was. Yeah, good. <laughs> thank you. It is literally the bit that uh, I ended up running, doing lighting sales for a company. Yeah, sold so much stuff they advanced me to becoming a sales manager, the national sales manager. And then I became Victorian state manager. Then I became national general manager. And I had on weekends, we'd have up, you know, up to a hundred staff working on shows all around Australia. So, well, all up the Eastern seaboard anyway. So I ended up running companies. And, and the thing was, that was how I paid my way to do acting on the side. And then eventually I had to leave that as national general manager. And even my dad then is like, are you really going to leave all that? You know, but I did. Um, and so you got to back yourself. I wouldn't be, yeah, but, yeah but, but I also wouldn't be encouraging everyone to quit their job and, and should start rocking up to auditions because, no. you know, that's not necessarily going to work. 
No. Well, that's it's and, and look, I was probably a little bit more firm like than it, that. It worked I, for you, but we're sending the wrong message. It works for so few. I know. My my kids are now saying they want to do acting and they I want to be an actor, and I'm saying, Oh, you're saying it wrong, darling. It's doctor. <laughs> doctor. No <Not> actor. <laughs> <laughs> um, well i mean yeah I, I kind of i'm just wondering whether i'd encourage anyone towards it and i wouldn't no it, no it's telling someone that um rather than trying to find a car in a car park you'd be better off finding a needle in a haystack and you go that's we, it's not easier it's so much harder yeah but you especially did. how long it takes to get there yeah but you did it and i'm wondering what what i mean it's not just because you're funny right I mean, like, why did, how did you get through? How did you, how did you go from being a national general manager to going, nah, nah, I'm going to become Shane Jacobson, the Shane Jacobson that the whole country knows? How, what the fuck? Oh, it, Kenny it? did it. I was, you know, having a brother who's a creative genius and a director Clayton helps. Jacobson. Clayton, yeah, he, you know, having Clayton as a brother helps because we made a project together and we did, we did, and at that point we had the skills to do all of it. Like I did the lighting, Clay did the editing, Clay did the directing, we both did the writing. What was your budget? Oh, on that, in the end, 600,000 for the whole thing, but we worked on it. A very similar budget to a film like Crackerjack for anyone watching or listening. So that, that basically you cannot make a film on that. You would have had to have had people on deferred payments who were, you know. No, we, we did everything. You just did everything. Everything, and and yes, you're right. So we, you, everyone volunteered to do it. We got release forms from every single extra in it, and then when the film made money, we ripped up every one of those release forms and paid them anyway. Apparently, we're the first people to have paid people that didn't have to be paid. But we went look at the time that we asked them to sign. That was because we didn't have the money to pay them. So we we went back after that and then worked out how long people had worked and we paid them anyway. We paid out hundreds of thousands of dollars that that because we said it's not ours. Like they they gave it to us to get a movie made. That was the mission. Then when the movie was successful, that's another thing, you know. But the, I think the best advice I ever got from Paul Hogan and Brian Brown, which was almost identical for both of them yeah. when I started, they, they were great mentors to me and still are, um, is they basically said the same thing, which was, mate, <clears throat> and if you think about those two guys, it makes sense that it comes from them. Um, you're, a, you're, you're a funny guy. You're a likable guy. Australia likes you. Be yourself. They can smell a rat a mile away. Just stay yourself <clears throat> and you'll be right. But don't, don't try and figure out who you're supposed to be. They're digging who you are. Stay you. And they said, don't go looking under any rocks or they just kept saying, don't, don't go looking to figure out who you're supposed to be. If you don't know the answer to something, say you don't know the answer to it. If you do know the answer, feel free to say it. Just, but both of them, like honestly, both their skills were slightly different. But their point was, don't don't muck around with Australians. They'll let you know. <laughs> oh, and don't they? Don't they? I mean, I, I mean, I, we've benefited similarly by being ourselves. I mean, I certainly started being myself a lot more later on, and that that ended up really getting me a lot further. I think when I was younger, I was trying to be an actor. Yeah. Um, you know, I was trying to, I was, I was trying to full, full, fulfill some kind of ideal of myself or some expect, some ideal that I expected others to have of me. And when I stopped doing all that, and I can tell you the moment I stopped it too, it was on Ando's Brush With Fame. I just, um, it's the only time I've ever seen myself on camera and seen me and seen, oh, that's me. You know, that, that, oh, that's, that's me that's being me. me. Yeah, yeah. So, so the advice, just be yourself, is wonderful advice. But it took me twenty years to learn how. But, it, but by the same token, um, I've always tried to be me. But you can't be young and know who you are too. Like it takes a long yeah. while to figure out who, for me, who Shane Jacobson is. Like you got to figure out who you, who your mates are, what people you do admire, what you do believe in, what your faith is. Like, you know, we're, we're like you, you saying that house is the first house you wanted to live in. Like I've, I, I live in the Macedon Ranges now and this is where I will be forever with my wife and my kids. This is the home for them now. And, you know, even, it sounds weird, but I've jumped all over the place, lived in Fitzroy and lived in Sweden. I've lived all over the place. And even getting to the point that you stop bouncing from base plate to base plate, you know, that takes a bit. So I guess, I guess there's no... Uh, harm for the one of better terms in not knowing exactly who you are for a bit because you've got to you've got to try a whole bunch of food to find out what you love and what you hate don't you like you have to you've got to swallow some shit that tastes terrible <laughs> to 
to go, yeah, yeah. I'm, ne- I'm never eating Brussels sprouts again. <laughs> Um, yeah, well, I mean, I've, yeah, I've worked out what I want by um, by establishing what I don't want. You don't re- you don't really need need to know what you want. You just have to start with something you think you're interested in and keep working through it and discard the stuff you don't want, and you'll end up with what you want. It's very hard to know what you want before you start uh, doing it. Um, I, I, I found I found that the two biggest questions in life are, are, are who who am I, and what do I want. And I think they're they're the two most important questions that um, that that we all face. And you can't say world peace. You can, I mean, I'm not talking. No, what do you actually want? If you, you pay can, me, if you pay me enough, I'll, <laughs> I'll work for world peace. <laughs> <laughs> in, 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 in terms of if you had agency across an entire day or week, and you weren't obligated to any of your current obligations, and you're resourced to the point where you could spend that time however you wanted to spend it, how would that time be spent? What would you want to do? with that time if you recorded it and um, that's the question that i've sweated over and and the who are you thing i went I, I went to a friend a couple of years ago and said um i, I don't i don't know much this identity thing's doing my head in i don't know who the fuck i am i'm not i mean i you know i'm bits and pieces from everywhere but i you know i don't really have an identity um I, and the closest i could come to when it came to who I am was I'm an eight year old kid in bare feet with a rucksack wandering through the world, very curious and alarmed. Um, and, 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 and I just saw myself as this kind of this, this young boy adventuring through the world, trying to make sense of all the wonder. And so I took this to, um, um, to a very, very, um, close friend, she's she runs Love Your Sister for us, and um, I said I've finally worked out who I am. I'm a I'm a I'm a <laughs> you know I'm a barefoot kid with a rucksack wandering through the world and just marvelling at all at it all. And she said bullshit. You read Huck Finn too many times when you. Read it. <laughs> um, and I was like, actually, I did. It was my favourite book. <laughs> and so I realised I'd just projected some kind of thing into who I wanted to see myself as. And she said, bullshit, Sam. You're a six-month-old puppy on the back of a ute doing 110. <laughs> and I thought, well, I'm probably still no closer to ever answering that question, but that's more right than the one I had. Who are you, Shane Jacobson? I'm um I'm a guy standing on the side of the road watching a kid with a rucksack stand in the middle of the road getting hit by a ute with a dog in the back going oh fuck that's Samuel Johnson killing Samuel Johnson. Because <laughs> 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 <Which> is... <laughs> uh, I was so. I was... <laughs> <laughs> I was so- fuck you, man. Fuck you. I don't even want to do a podcast now. <laughs> this is my last podcast. Oh, I'm not going to bother. Oh. I, I want you to I, because the puppy, because knowing you, you know, a bit as I do, like you are an even share of both of those. Um, which is, I, I love them both, which is why I've decided to drag them together, but. The truth is the Huck Finn thing, it's so funny because I identified with that because when I was a kid, I left home once and and with a some stuff and what at the time. God, is that in your book too? Because it's, it's mum stuff, isn't it? The, my favourite part of the letter is when, is when I find out that your mum helps you pack. You um, I, mean, I mean, it's, it's you know, I'm leaving. I'm out of here. You screw you. Oh, All right, I'll help you pack. She did. I mean, what's great like, parenting? I, and I look at it now going, most people go, no, no, don't mind, darling. Oh, love you. guess what? I haven't had my microphone plugged in the whole time. But I'm hearing you. <laughs> I know, but the sound's going to be shit. <laughs> sounds pretty good at my end. Sounds good at mine. All right, we're on now. Jeez. Oh, look at that. I like oh, where I was saying. Oh, you know, you know, go on, you know go what? on. Sorry. But you know what's great about it? We, all it means is you and me have to lift our game now because this is the point in Wizard of Oz where it goes colour. <laughs> right, how can we? I can't lift my game. I already retired from podcasting. That's right. <laughs> You've got to just pick up the game again. 
Um, do you do it? Do you do a potty? I've got one at the moment. Um, yeah, which is Tall Tales and Epic Fails, which is just talking. How often about, do you do it? Hey, how often do you do it? Oh, look, that's a very good question because we've had a hiatus of a, about two months because the three people I'm involved with have all since COVID lifted. Um, have all gone interstate and been incredibly busy. So we've, we've got to come back together. Um, I'm going away and then coming back in a week to do to do some, some more. So uh, yeah, I, we've, we've we've had some trouble just getting our times to align. It all happened during COVID, and then it was another thing I, we started up, and then um, it got busy, and I've been flying flying again. Unfortunately, I'm back in those COVID cans called aeroplanes. You know. Yeah, I caught my first one uh, last Wednesday to go to Sydney to do some PR for the book. And um, yeah, yeah, it's weird. It's weird going back to them, isn't it? Yeah, what? You know, you, I mean, do you want to just stay in the Macedon Rages and just never leave now? Or yes. is that the effect that COVID had on you? Because I don't want to yeah. leave now. I'm just fine here. Yeah, I, yeah, I've, yeah, well, you know, I used to fly a lot. So before yeah. COVID, I did like 200 flights the year before COVID. And then, um, and then the year of COVID, I did none. I got to kiss my kids goodnight every single night. It's pretty big. It's funny because I got to um, what I had thrust upon me, if you will, is imagine if someone said, um, how much would you pay to spend a year at home with your kids? Um, I actually worked out. I lost a lot of money during COVID, a lot of money. Um, but then me and my wife said, you know what? If that was the question, how much would you pay to stay at home? Now that I know like, just how good it is, as much as we lost, I would have paid that. Yeah. Yeah. So I actually didn't lose a thing. I just feel like I, I'm like I lost, like I said, like all of us, a lot of money, lost a whole year's worth of work. Um, but yeah, I looked at how much it was and when if someone said, I'll give you that much money to stay at home with your kids for a year, would you pay that? I'd go, yeah. If yeah, every yeah, client could not sure. be offended, because you and I both know how it works, I wasn't allowed to go to a gig. So no one could be offended. No one could be angry at me. I didn't cause it. I didn't double book. I just wasn't allowed to get on an airplane. So I had to stay home with my family. So it was the perfect scenario where no one could yell at me. I'd love to be there and host your event. I'd love to come and do the charity event. I, I just, I'm not allowed to. So I'll just stay at home with the kids. <laughs> um, did you know Gudinski? He's in your neck of the, he was in your neck of the woods. I was at a bar in Sydney uh, at a hotel and I'd flown up there to do a gig and um, I was having a drink with a mate. And Michael came past and kind of did the point as I was right in front of him. He pointed and he went, I had to go Shane. He goes, yeah, sorry. He was never going to remember my name. But he was, but we loved, like he loved him for, I mean, that guy had so much going on in his head. And I mean, he's such a loss to music in this country. Such a loss. It's like pulling the oil and the fuel out of an engine as far as I'm concerned. He was the oil and fuel in, in the Australian music industry. He was incredible. And he did so much for it, so much for it. But anyway, having said all that, he said, um, when was the last time I saw you? And I said, uh, Michael, um, myself and my wife sat with you and your wonderful wife at the Logies last night. <laughs> 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 the whole night. And he said, oh, Shane, I'm so sorry. And it was the thing. He was a bolstery, loud thing. Uh, he certainly did have a heart. It was just, a, it was like a thundercloud, as you know. Thunderclouds look terrifying. And then when, when they rain, it's water. And that water you drink, and that's what keeps you alive. And people shower in it and goes around boats and under bridges. You know, water's a beautiful thing. But it looks terrifying when it's going with big, dark clouds. But, of course, what comes out of it is rain. And uh, and, and that's essential. So he's a bit like that. He was bolstery and all that kind of stuff. But, look, I, I by no means was one of his good friends or anything else. But was I a fan of his and admirer and have I watched him work? And I've got so many friends who, who are friends with him and have worked with him for many, many years. Great loss. I went, I went to his service uh, as a salute to say goodbye to, to one of the greats, you know, in what he did in the music industry, which was a lot. Yeah, yeah, he was, he was an absolute pioneer and very used to getting what he wants too. Uh, we, had a few, <laughs> we, we had a few run-ins um, and uh, one time he, he most certainly didn't get what he was after. Um, he, he, after we won the Gold Logie, he wanted a sequel to the Molly Telly movie. And uh, I said, mate, I'm, I'm busy trying. I promised my sister I'd raise $10 million. I'm, you know... I'm done, mate. Like I need, I need, I've got other goals now. And he said, well, what if, what if, what if you made your 10 million? Would you do it again? Would you, would you do it then? I said, mate, I'm on $6 million. I've got another $4 million to raise. I'll speak to you in about three and a half years. And he said, I'll cover you to 10 million, come back and do the sequel. 
And I said, no, you won't. And said no to it. I don't believe in just doing things again for the sake of it. Mm. In fact, my whole charity runs on it. We don't, we don't repeat campaigns. We, you know, I'm not into just doing shit over and over again. The only way we could have gone was down given the yeah. height of the given the height of the first one but i think he'd made so much money on the soundtrack um that, <laughs> that he was really keen to go again um and um and I, I said no and he and he said look i'll ring the health minister uh, you know who do you want me to call I'll, I'll i'll make sure you've got your 10 million and then you can come to me i said i said michael i'm gonna do it my way and and about three and a half four years later i got to 10 million on my own and thought, fuck, it would have been easier if I just let him. Just said it. yes. <laughs> I'll, I'll joke about us kind of, you know, you know, uh, fighting and stoushing and all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, he put his money where his mouth was. And, he, yeah, yeah. and, and, and I dare say I wouldn't have a charity if he hadn't have bailed me out a couple of times. It's amazing. Isn't it? And, and mm. you know what, that's that, that I think that's, um, it's been an incredible loss for the music industry, but <clears throat> what I think is fantastic is um, he was known to the general public as this big, bolstering thing but all the great stories come out it's, it's such a pity people have to wait um until they're gone for the for the general public and the family to get to hear all the beautiful all the good stories about people do you know what i mean um yeah. I, 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 and i know i know you know i've got there's some people can argue that at some funerals some people make out that someone was amazing who was a bad person this is not the story when getting to his case what's oh, no, great he... about it is but it's everyone now is going oh my god we spent so long talking about how he was kind of the big businessman that everyone didn't get a chance to tell their story about the nice stuff he did. So I'm, I'm kind of thrilled for the family that I keep hearing from pe lots of people in rock and roll who just go, man, did I tell you what he did for me once? You know, we're running out of time. I could talk to you forever. Um, hey, you know how I'm always asking for stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, can, can we do this again? Yeah. Um, Cause you're just so much fun and I love you so much. Yeah. I love you um, too, brother. Um, you can do this again whenever you want. I drive to read the book bit. You don't have to. Um, the book's called Dear Mum. Yeah. Um, it's uh, it's out now. Uh, we'd rather you buy it through us at loveyoursister.org. Click on market, loveyoursister.org. Click on market. If you buy it through us, a lot more goes to the cause. If you buy it through the bookstores, uh, we get very little of that. Uh, so whilst we do encourage people to support retail we'd love for them to buy this book from us at loveyoursister.org um and oh, the way home they can buy a coffee from a retail outlet <laughs> um also shane jacobson's in the market for a new keyboard if you've got a spare do let us know <laughs> oh, jesus christ and, I, and it's still dripping oh dude um so the, uh, we've, we've got a number of amazing people in this book amanda keller vicar and lincoln bull yeah. vicar and linda ball guy pierce rebecca gibney patty newton shannon noel turia pitt brian mannix and of course shane jacobson would you would you do the honors of re reading us your letter to your mum shay oh look i will i'd love to which page yeah. am i on let me find a number oh, 20 we, let's see page 20 here we go all right okay so this is shane jacobson's letter to his mum dear mum I'm just seeking some clarification, Re, the boundless love and affection that you have given me over the years. Recently, I was told by a complete stranger that I had a face only a mother could love, and it got me thinking. I wonder if you only love me because you're my mum. So I just wanted to unpack this statement a little, or should I say, do a deep dive into this theory. Firstly, what kind of face would you want a child to have if you had a choice? If you could change my face, what would you change? In many ways, I hope you're happy enough with the face I've got because it's hard not to notice that you made my big brother Clayton's face pretty much exactly the same as mine, albeit a bit older. You made the faces of my dear sisters, Kim and Nat, much different from us boys, which I think was a very good idea. So well done there. The love you offered was seemingly limitless and endless to us all growing up. And it is still the case now that all four, of, uh, all four babies are fully grown adults with babies of our own. Now your grandchildren are receiving the same wholesale quantities of love from you. P.S. I hope you're happy with their faces. On reflection, though, there are a few moments when it could be argued that even being my mum may not have been enough for you to act with unconditional love, such as when you drove the family Morris 1800. This is all true, by the way. Such as when you drove the family Morris 1800 with me and some of my mates 
uh, in it onto the school oval and did a donut in full view of the kids at school in an attempt to embarrass me and possibly get me in trouble with the teachers as well. Then after dropping me off as you drove away, you yelled out of the car window, I love you, Shaney Waney, which she did because she... Stop. This is because she used to do that to shit me. I went to a very rough school and saying, I love you, my darling, is like the worst thing you can yell out of a car window at Nidri Tech. And she would do it. <clears throat> I think just to, I don't know, teach me how to defend myself. <laughs> Uh, I continue, I love you, Shaney Waney, at the top of your voice for all to hear, which completely undid all the coolness of your previous circle work on the Oval. There was also the time I said I was going to leave home at the age of about five because you wouldn't give me some lollies. So you helped me pack some clothes and a ham sandwich into a towel, which we tied with sticks and I, a stick, and I walked up to the very end of our seemingly very long street with said care package over my shoulder. Just like my favourite book character at the time, Tom Sawyer. Boom! See, we both read it. On reaching the end of the street, I turned around and came straight back home and sat down at the kitchen table to eat my ham sandwich. You poured me a glass of milk and said, welcome back. I guess even in those moments, you offered me love and support. All of that is true. You did your best to teach me all that I would need to know to survive a grown-up world, such as when you sat me on the end of my bed and said, now, darling, it's time we talked about the birds and the bees. To which I replied, mum, I think I'm a bit too young for this. And you said, fair enough. Let me know when you're ready. <laughs> we never really did get to have that chat, but it turns out it wasn't all that necessary because the truth is I've never seen a bird have sex with a bee. Um, <clears throat> I think I did say to her, I've, I've, never, I've never found the need to have a sex with... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but when you say having sex with a bird or a bee, it reads differently, so I had to... <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so it looks like I never really needed to understand it. Uh, bravery was also something that you had an unlimited supply of. I wonder if this is this too is something only a mother can have. You gave birth to the four of us. You said that it was, that it was wonderful. You had two brain hemorrhages and never once complained. You did the discs in your spine and slept on our beer table for a while and, and made out that that was all fine. I've watched you say goodbye to all of your seven brothers and sisters and most of their wives and husbands, and yet you still describe your life as blessed. And now that you have Parkinson's, uh, have had Parkinson's for over 18 years and still have a smile on your face that lights up a room. Yet whenever I get as much as a paper cut, I want to tell you how much it hurts so you could comfort me and tell me that it was going, that all was going to be okay. Well, I've tried to be a little like you, mum, and also tried to surround myself with people like you. I found a wife who is loving and as kind as you. God, I'm going to get teary reading this. I have children who have a, who have a, a heart like yours. I have friends who are right by my side just like you. Um, and then I thought, what if everyone was like you? Then the world would be a better place, but the world can't be like you because you're one of a kind. And my favourite bit is, you're mine. Love your son, Shane. Oh, it gives me a little tear in my eye reading that. Oh. That's because it's such a beautiful letter. My landlord was not wrong, Shane. Um, thank you. For, Pleasure. Um, thank you for writing uh, for the book. You know, in amongst being chief scout for Scouts Victoria, in amongst your work for Parkinson's Victoria and the Mirabelle Foundation, in amongst running his 12 companies, in amongst being one of Australia's favourite identities, he's found time to write a letter to his mum for our little book, for which I thank him. Shane, thank you. Thanks, mate. I, and thank you for giving us all an opportunity to do it, mate, because the truth is when, when our family get to read this stuff, like you give us an opportunity to kind of, remind us, hey, have you ever thought about writing a letter to your mum? So, um, and I've got to say, I think people should um, take a leaf out of what your book does, which is, we know why you ask people of note, because I guess it makes it easier to get out there and raise money, and that goes to you, which then goes to cancer research. So, um, all that's a great pipeline that makes perfect sense. But I, I do the same as I've said when I when I wrote m my book, which was my bio, I said to people, you should do it for yourself, because it's quite cathartic. Yeah. The people should take a leaf out of your book and, and write a letter to their mum. Um, I agree. Um, it's going to be an incredibly um, gratifying process um, if the contributors' feedback is anything to go by. I know that some people are buying these, including their own letter to their mum and then gifting the mum. Uh, the oh, book what a day. great idea. Um, so, um, yeah, please do. If you're listening or watching, do entertain the idea. It's been most valuable for us. And um, have a great day. Uh, be kind. Stay curious. Shane Jacobson, thank you very much. Anytime, nice. my buddy. Anytime. Cheers, mate. I'll speak soon. See you soon.